Uh, it happened again. <laughs> now, when Anthony Hudson was talking about the sequel, it was just as good as the original. I didn't realize I was turning it into a full-on franchise. 48, 48 times this has now happened, or close to. And my strike rate from the 48 times we've recorded would be at least 95%. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Yeah, hundred percent. Like I can't think of many episodes where one of us, or where we were both sober going into it. Pretty sure as well that um, you have not had a hangover episode this year. No, I don't think so. I mean, do we really include the Vegas ones? <laughs> I like, wasn't I always hungover in Vegas? Really? <laughs> I think you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sleepless capital or whatever they call it. Well, I've been drinking in some episodes, so that's something. But I haven't actually been hung over in any episode. That's just promoting shit. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's a bad that's example. Funny. You're that's terrible. <laughs> Mate, we've gone through that many different brands. Look at that, Corona, cut and dry. Cut and dry. You'd think from the 120 people that tune into this shit. <laughs> Somebody would have One. some sort of addiction somewhere. Fuck it. We'd even have Heineken Zero. I don't know. Whatever. Get us on the right path. God. Any churches out there? <laughs> Release me of my sins. We need something, please. Yeah. I've got nothing for you. I'm dead to the world. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you can do with that, right? You can, uh, you know, you can just uh, smash I'll, it. I'll just, I'll push it up against the camera, and then when I push it up, we can just, it can do that magical thing where all of a sudden it just does the big glass smash thing. So here we go. <laughs> Righto, Jared Thomas, my beautiful co-host. It is episode 48, and I've got it right this time because I double-checked before because I'm such a well-organized individual. Pretty sure we just spent like 10 minutes before this episode talking about how unorganized we were going to this one. It took you precisely 0.2 of a second to expose us. <laughs> I do it every time. It's my yeah. favorite. <laughs> you love throwing me under that big bus. Hey, I wasn't throwing you. I was throwing both of us under that bus. Neither of us came into yeah, this. But I'm pretty sure you pushed me first. <laughs> okay. Well. Anyway, how are you? I well, I'm very tired. Don't know if you can tell by the genuine situation that's happening with my eyes right now. But I'm well. Uh, another weekend of footy in the book, except it's a quieter weekend because the buys, and I fucking hate the buys. Uh, and yeah, I'm feeling good and ready to. We're going to start another week. <laughs> Ready to go again. Yeah, it's the beauty of these Sunday time slots. Just never know where they're going to take us, how we're going to feel. You know. But it was a good weekend of footy besides um, besides Thursday night. Don't really remember too much about that, but uh, the Saints had a good win. Oh, yeah. We beat fucking West Coast. Woo! Come on, boys. Huge don't, win. Big don't lie. Win. You were happy. Oh. Yeah, that's how fucking low we are. That's how that's how low we have stooped this year to the point. I literally said like ten minutes before I even jumped the recording. I was like to mum, I was like, there is no reason I should be this excited about a Saints win against West Coast. If at the start of the year you told me like you would be this pumped up after a Saints win against West Coast, I'd be like, fucking shut up. Like it's West Coast. But I came out of that and I was like, oh, Mason Wood, ah, <laughs> <laughs> just, I was like. Yeah, with a low bar, I tell you, it's a fucking low bar. <laughs> That's very funny. It was good. I was sitting at the pub watching it, and I was just there like, God, I hope they win. Because a win is like, you know, well, at least you got the job done, and you can forget about it. A loss to West Coast, especially for St Kilda, would have been a 
God if forbid, I, I would have. The, if I said the, the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the reaction from you would have been, nah. I don't think I would have done the podcast. I think <laughs> I would have been severely upset. Uh, and I was working at the time. I probably would have stopped working. Uh, but I feel like it would have been a fair enough reason as to why. But hey, if buts but and maybes, did. right? Exactly. We won. Same Who talks same about that? <laughs> when you do something trivial in the next few years and be like, oh, how much did St. Kilda win against West Coast by in round 12, 2024? You'll say whatever they won by. I don't remember either. Yeah, no, we won. That. <laughs> yeah. um, it was 14 no. points. Oh, well, there you go. Well, we had a win uh, and then Port had the bye. They didn't play. There was just no result uh, to speak of, I don't think. They played... Um... Played Hawthorne and DVJ kicked the winner. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that made that that feels like it was so long ago. That feels like it was like three weeks ago, but it was like on Thursday. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's happened. It just happened recently. Yeah. Nah, look, it, it happens, you know. Mm. Can't be, you know, always winning happens. That's footy, isn't it? Like, you just got to take it in, regroup. And I will speak on behalf of every single poor fan that ever existed or has existed or continues to exist and just simply thank fuck it's the buy this week we needed it you know because really I funny as well. tell you what <laughs> what's that <laughs> i thought the afl loss was going to be like the low point for like what i laid for the weekend even though it's like it's not even that bad like can't a very good team you know you bring it for three quarters kind of thing. Then I saw the Sandful score. <laughs> and I saw the halftime of the Sandful and I thought it was a typo. I thought it was a typo because it was like one to like 40 or something. And I was like. Look, we're tanking. <laughs> sandful. T- tanking yeah. for a draft pick in the Sandful. Yeah, like we were tanking at the moment. Um, obviously, we don't want to play in the Sandful anymore, so. We're going for those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're, what's that word? What, oh, this we're episode, sticking it to the man. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those poor Sandful players. <laughs> well, no, they won't know what winning will be like for the whole year. I was going to say, I, I haven't, like, I'm not exactly up to date on Sandful, the latter, but I, I don't know how well they're doing. It's funny because neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> Should we check it? Here we go. We're a Sandful podcast now. Let's have a look. This is the most uh, content the Port Adelaide Magpies will ever get on the channel, too. Yep, so we're doing it. <laughs> Sandful 2024. Oh. Port Adelaide Magpies at bottom. Zero wins, eight losses, with a percentage of 36. Uh, what is with the percentages in this in this league? Oh, it's it's quite low. Why are they all, like, 59 to 36? Is the percentage different in the Sandful to... Yeah, we have different mathematics over here. Yeah, right. What? I'm confused. My brain isn't working. Well, it, isn't it the same? It's like local footy. They have the same percentages for local footy. Unless yours are different over there. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. It's <laughs> like, you know, it is. You know, it doesn't matter, right? We're bottom. It doesn't oh, matter. We're just we're we're tanking. <laughs> no, I don't care. Like, it, we'll be out of there in no time and be dominating the VFL when we go in there. It's all good. It's fine. Anyway, I, just speaking of local footy, we might as well get into that because I want to talk about footy more. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we played local footy this weekend, everybody. Yes. Um, Jared showed me a uh, a photo of him for the first time playing footy since being back and didn't let me to be allowed to put it as stupid sexy. So I'm just <laughs> labelling it now. It was going to be but then he forcefully denied me to do it. <laughs> it's my first footy photo in like two and a half years. So <laughs> it was like, it was a real weird sight because like the last time I had a footy photo taken of me, I had like long blonde hair and now I have short, shorter brown hair. It looks very funny. It's very good because it's like, obviously we posted a photo of you compared to Harley Reid, um, which I have something to comment about that in a second, but so do I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the fact is, that you went from that and then you get a photo two and a half years later and you still have pretty much near the same. I'm going to call it a lion's mane. Just. <laughs> it's very long right now. Like a lot longer than it usually ever is. So. Yeah. But you can't be stuffed cutting it. Nah. 
I, I said I was going to cut it when I first got back. It's now been like almost two weeks to be back and I haven't even planned on it. So, shame. Yeah. <laughs> but you won and you had many a touches. You didn't kick a goal, but did we? I was okay. I was okay at best. Uh, we won by 138 points, which was fun. We got to three quarter time and uh, the coach was like, uh, our goal now is to not let him kick goal, and then they kicked the goal in the first forty seconds of the last quarter. Yeah, it <laughs> it's the same. Really thing. funny. It literally took us straight out the center, kicked it over my head, bounced behind me. Somebody picked it up, kicked the goal. And I was like, "Cool." <laughs> wait, no wait. Was it your player? No, it wasn't my player. Thankfully, oh, okay. but it was just like I watched it go over my head. I turned around to be like, "Oh, someone's gonna have that covered." Nope, they did, and they kicked the goal. And I was like, "Ah, oh, all right." <laughs> but, it's always great. Yeah, when they did but, that. Uh, I kicked zero goals one at a set shot. I fucked it. Um, and yeah, that, that was basically it. It was a, a pretty nothing out of football. And then the seniors won by 90 something as well in the one. So is what it is. <laughs> a good day for the for the club. Good day, good day for Dingley. <laughs> Dingley wins, huh? Dingley did win. And the 19s won before me. So all right. <laughs> Go Far time. out. Good day. And that was at home? Yes, all, all at home. So, good day for the crowd. Everyone got there at 10 a.m. for the 19s and stayed till 4.30 for the end of the seniors and good stuff. <laughs> really just one of those days, isn't it? One of those good days. One of those good days. Down if we had club rooms, we don't have club rooms right now because they are all getting redone. But if we had club rooms, that would have been, been going off. <laughs> would have been, been a big day. <laughs> what have we? <laughs> I love those ones. Everything, every team wins and it's just like, right, I'll see you up there in a bit. <laughs> Close the doors, lads. <laughs> what about you? I know that uh, you've got some some very good stories from from your day. Well, <laughs> <laughs> considering that my game started at quarter past two, and then my day ended at five a.m., I think um, tells a story. <laughs> <laughs> Tells a lot about it. Lana, we played at a top four side and we've been sitting that fifth, sixth spot, but haven't beaten anyone good. But just we're <laughs> we're Port Adelaide, really. We're the Port Adelaide of Div Six. <laughs> beat up beat up on the on the, the lower teams and just sort of fight out battles against <laughs> the other Well, ones. last week we lost by three points and it was heartbreaking because we should have won. We were leading by five goals and yeah, didn't happen. So it was pretty distraught. So to come into this week back at home again, and we win by three points, is a yeah one of those like it's like when uh yeah like I don't know I don't know how to describe it. It's like one of those things. It's like good karma. Yes. I guess. You earned it. Yeah. <laughs> Played well. Um, took about eighteen intercept marks, which was good. Um, <laughs> you know, it, just a standard ant day, really. Uh-huh. Light work. Had the long sleeves on. Very standard air day. <laughs> it was borderline, like it was supposed to be like eighteen degrees. And my my temperature gauge for wearing a long sleeve or not is dependent on two factors. This like degrees, it's always like eighteen or below, I'll wear it. And if it's gonna be cloudy, sunny, or you know, raining, whatever. So it just hit eighteen. It was sunny, so I was up. Like, mm, but there was a there was a bit of wind, so it was like, all right, it, coolness <laughs> in the made, air. Yeah, yeah, the cold change was coming through. Yeah, and like two fifteen is not the hottest part of the day anymore. It's like twelve. So yeah. like by the time you finish the game, it's like four thirty. It's dark. Like it's like lights are on, yellow footies out. You're like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come I mean, out. The lights are on, and it's just like everyone's you know gone, and it's just <laughs> yeah, like it was. It was like that, but you know, we got the job done. Boy, did we celebrate! Where did you celebrate? <laughs> my, my favorite thing, like when, like the last year of like junior footy, when like you're the oldest age group, so it's like you're playing on a Sunday, but you play at like three or three thirty. My favorite thing ever is going in at half time and it's light outside, coming out and it is pitch black, and you're like, how the fuck did that happen? <laughs> you come out, yellow footy, lights are on, you're like, fuck, it's like a new day, <laughs> like. No, you yeah, like, oh, <laughs> Am I coming out for training? Like, what's going on? Yeah, like, I used to play, like, before I put contacts in, I used to play blind. So the last quarter I'd come out, couldn't see shit. Like, I was just like, I was not a last quarter player. Let me tell you, if the game got close in the last, take me off. I was I was not even not even going to get close to the footy. 
imagine that like the coaches bring you, bring you in for a performance review and they've got a graph and it's just <laughs> it's like like first half like oh nice mate that's just <laughs> so we've seen a trend at about 4 57 p.m we've just seen this sudden dip in your performance <laughs> Mate, I think your fitness needs some work. No, no, it's not that, mate. I literally cannot see the ball. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm as fit as I've ever been. I just, I can't see it. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's not. <laughs> oh, it's such a weird injury. <laughs> imagine that on the injury list. Jared Thomas. Blind. I imagine that's what would happen if like, my contact falls out one day because <laughs> I won't really be able to play. So I can imagine it'll just be like, oh, boys, JT's out for the rest of the game. He's, he's lost the contact. <laughs> that's it. His, 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 his right contact fell out. Why is he turning left? <laughs> Why is he running around with an eye patch on? Because I can't just see. just you <laughs> doing circle work. Fucking <laughs> <I can> Zoolander. <laughs> like, Gee, Jared, Jared runs around really well. Hey, not bad. I, your heat map is just a fucking circle. <laughs> circle around the center square. <laughs> it's got train tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, you've had a you've had a big day, and hence why you are now hungover because you had a very good win, and then a very big day afterwards slash night slash morning, and <laughs> and then now we're here. Yeah. So, long story short. We're good. Good weekend for footy. <laughs> good weekend for us. Yep, absolutely. It do, it counts as a weekend because Port lost on Thursday, which is technically just a midweek oh, game. Yeah, not the weekend. That's the midweek. That's a. What are we talking about? But anyway, well, we don't do round stuff. But I thought I'd give you a ladder update because we're technically halfway through the year. Halfway now. Yeah. Okay. Round 12, 24 rounds. So I'll I'll speed run this for you. So it's Sydney. Essendon, Geelong, Port, Carlton, Frio, GWS, Gold Coast, Collingwood, Melbourne, Dogs, Hawthorne, Brisbane, Adelaide, <laughs> St Kilda, fifteenth, uh, West Coast, Richmond, and North. I didn't appreciate that you didn't label any numbers for anyone else. That you got to St Kilda, you were like fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Just really wanted to hammer you home that you're. <laughs> what I find really interesting, and it kind of happened last year as well, is that every team from like six to fourteen could basically be swapped over right now and I'd be like, yep, that's probably fair enough. <laughs> like like you could you could put a Brisbane in seventh and I'd be like, okay, like sure. Any team from about six to fourteen, you're like, they're probably the same and can beat any other team in that in that bracket at any point, really. <laughs> no, I agree with that. The only thing is, and I'll make a statement right now. I don't know if it's a big statement, but from Adelaide <laughs> so the way I'm gonna word this we yeah, I have to be smart here. So from Adelaide down Adelaide to down north down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ruling him out. Yeah, no, I'm happy to do that too. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So I'm sorry for the Saints. West Coast had me there for a second. Richmond, <laughs> Richmond won't have Richmond won't win a game for the rest of the year because they'll have no players uh, left. Yeah, I was going to say not even for the fact that they're just not good. The fact that they just will simply not have anybody to field a football team. Yeah, so they're going to get their B's and C's to come up just to field a team. Yep. We might get a call up by the end of it. <laughs> Um and North, mm-hmm. North and North. I got no comment on them. Do North Melbourne win a game this year? Do yes, they beat happen? Richmond. See, I don't even think they beat Richmond. I think Richmond beat them. Do they play Richmond for the rest of the year? I feel like they actually... haven't played. Each other. I feel like they haven't even played each other yet, have they? Uh, I reckon they North play West Coast this week, but it's in Perth. So, oh, I mean, yeah, next week it's in Perth. And they play Collingwood, Melbourne, Dogs, Suns. That's a tough run. Swans, Blues, Cats. Wow. That is a tough run. Holy shit. They do play Richmond uh, in round August 21. August third, round 21. Yeah. And it's then they... Marvel. Oh, hang on a second. If they get a good run of form, if they get a good run of form, right, they play Richmond and West Coast back to back. Hello. Talk about getting yourselves at the bottom of the ladder. Interesting. Game on. This is Harley Reed spec 2.0. <laughs> they might, Richmond might sneak a, out. Sneak a spoon in <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Holy moly. That is, they play West Coast in down in Hobart too. 
Oh, they, is, that like an over, is, is that an overseas travel for West Coast, by the way? That is so far. That is unnecessarily far for West Coast to go <laughs> to play. You might as well play in Antarctica. <laughs> That's the longest flight to play a game of football ever, and we've played games in fucking China. Like, that is, that is the longest flight. <laughs> you see, Koshi wants to bring him back to China. <laughs> fucking Jesus. By the way, the Anywhere AFL was like, mm, I reckon you can go back now. Mm, let's win a game at home first. <laughs> Before we decide to take our talents to China. Yeah, no. I'm... We're undefeated in China, so we're wrong. That's true. We're not. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to rule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to rule out the bottom five teams as well. Adelaide, maybe still, because they're tied with Brisbane. <laughs> but, um... nah, fuck them. But I also don't think Hawthorne's going to play finals. I rate Hawthorne right now as well, too, but I don't think they're going to play finals. <laughs> Remember how before we were doing like, what are we going to do on the podcast? Yeah. Well, now I'm going to do something that's not on the run sheet. We're going, we're going already. We're about to go through Hawthorne's run home and see if they're going to make the eight or not. No. At the moment, they can beat anyone. Yeah, the way they're playing right now, absolutely. Well, next week's a good test. They're playing the Giants in Tassie. Now, if it was just playing the Giants, I wouldn't rate it, but they're playing him in Tassie. So, pretty good chance. That's another long travel for GWS, right? Yeah, that fucking, is far too You're going too, from up here yeah, and far. you're going down here. Like, it's. <laughs> you yeah. know that have business class in Sydney. Richmond and West Coast, two very winnable games. Then they play the Cats in Geelong, though, and that's pretty fucked. So. They play Frio, Collingwood, Adelaide. In Adelaide, GWS, Carlton, Richmond. North. Right. I tell you, I tell you what. Okay. I tell right. you what. All right, let me give you some. Okay, so of the Cats, Frio, Collingwood, Adelaide, and Carlton games, those five, if they can win two of them. Oh, I just did a thing. <laughs> 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 it's like, party it's time the... if they win two of them. <laughs> it is that is a perfect way. It's party time if they win two. It is actually party time if they win two of them. If they win one of them, they have lined themselves up very well to play finals. That's fucking hilarious. I <laughs> hope. That do that? I hope. I hope that comes through in the recording because that was really funny. Yeah, because if that happens, that is the clip this week. <laughs> that is the promo clip. No chance. There are chance. I'm, I've made two bold. I'm gonna. I've made one bold statement. I'm gonna make two. Because now we're doing bold statements. There you go. That's a segment we could do. Um, <laughs> we're doing this on the fly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I should. Um, I, I think they just miss out. <laughs> we better say all the next one. Yeah. <laughs> because it's they just can't... like, you know how teams have that run of form in a period of time and then they're like, they hit the buy that they'll have and it either changes completely. Momentum, yeah. Or they just run out of legs. Saints did that um, one of the years. We hit the buy. It wasn't just the fact that we hit the buy, but also Jack Steele did his shoulder. And as soon as we hit the that like middle part of the year, we just fell off a cliff. Like we were doing really well. We were like eight and three or seven and three or whatever. And then still did his shoulder and we hit the bye and then everything just went fucking downhill. So yes, they could do that. I don't think they're going to go downhill, downhill. I just don't think they're going to be able to keep the form that they have right now going. Mm, well, what are they? So they're five wins for the year. I think they dropped really? one of the very, there's a very good chance they lose to West Coast in three weeks time. In West Coast. West, big statement. West Coast don't make the top, bottom four. If they can't beat St. Kilda at home, who can they beat? That's fucked. Mm. It's a fucked mm. up statement. <laughs> Just quickly as well on the Hawks. Um, proudly and happily to bring you this stat that we're keeping an eye on. Charles on 14 goals for the year and Mitch Lewis, who hasn't been seen since around 23 last year, is, um, <laughs> yeah, they're on 17. It's a long way to go. <clears throat> so they currently need 58 more goals in half a season. It's a big, it's a big back half of the year. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, hmm. 
Yeah, nah, they're not doing that. <laughs> See, I was, I was, I was adamant with my statement. I knew it was coming. So, where are we okay? Sorry, Hawks fans, but it's really put the balls on the line there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't exactly a very tough, uh, tough, tough wager to make. I don't think. Did you see? Um, actually, a couple of things we can go through because we're a football podcast. Now, best content's football, obviously. What did you make of the uh, holding the ball rule? I like it. I I like I liked the umpiring Thursday night. It for the most part, like I liked the way that they were like very quick to it, and the umpires themselves like were very switched onto it. That so that that thing I like a lot. But I think the umpiring as a whole over the weekend, not not relating to the holding the ball thing, was fucking awful. I don't know. I don't know how much of the Essendon Gold Coast game you got to watch, but geez, there was some shit decisions down the stretch for both teams. Like some really fucking awful decisions down the stretch, and I was like, oh man, umpiring is a tough thing to do. <laughs> like, oh boy, I don't even think I have sympathy for them anymore. No. It used There's to be four like, of them out there. Yeah, it used to be like it's tough. I can't see it all. There's four of them out there now. There's a lot of cameras. Like just, like just have someone in your ear being like, "Hey man, that's an obvious one. Come on." Like, well, I don't know. Like yeah, the way they've done it though, and this has happened over the last four to five years, is they've turned rules into interpretations, right? And I, who said it? There was a quote. I think it was Nick Rewalt that yes. came out. It's yes. talking about the intent thing. Intent and uh, opinion or whatever it was, yeah. Fuck, I got fired up about that. I was like, yeah, yes, right. someone finally said it. Yeah. It, was, it was filthy too. And I was like, mate, you, was like, it was ready to go, Rewalt. But yeah, um, absolutely. Like it was, they are very quick to judge intent when it comes to insufficient intent. But then as soon as it's intent to handball, they're like, nah, I don't know. And it's like, come on then. Like, so did I like, the only way for me that I can see, and I don't want it, but the only way I see them actually fixing that part is la- last touch. <laughs> I fucking hate last touch. I, I hate it too. Either, but it's the only way I fix it. Yeah, I know. Um, I I think the, the, the rule that really annoys me right now is the one where if a player does not have prior opportunity and then attempts to dispose of the ball and doesn't dispose of it correctly, it should not be like I didn't have prior so play on. It should be incorrect disposal. Incorrect disposal should be the rule. It shouldn't be insufficient intent, whatever. Incorrect disposal should be it. So even if a player just picks it up, gets tackled, and then tries to give it away and completely airs the handball, that's an incorrect disposal. That's a throw. You're throwing the ball. Whether it's throwing it back at you, throwing it outwards, doesn't matter. If you go for the handball and you're getting tackled and you throw it away, whether on accident or on purpose, it's incorrect disposal. That's what I think isn't in the game right now and what I think fucks a lot of people over. And what it's what upsets a lot of fans because they all think it's incorrect disposal. They all see someone drop the ball and they're like, oh, like, why isn't that getting paid? And the umpire has to explain, oh, because they didn't have prior, so like it doesn't count kind of thing. I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, <laughs> if you're throwing the ball and you're not handling it or kicking it, it's you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Like, it just it annoys it's, me. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that because, like, there's a fine line with that, though, because if you see, a, like, the ball just pop out because mm-hmm. of a a contest or because of the tackle it's not it's like, like, it's, genuinely it's, attempting it. contact from somebody else that's fine i'm like that's that that's something yeah absolutely but if someone literally has had or both hands free goes for a handball and then gets tackled in their arm and they just completely throw the ball away sorry but it's a throw like oh it's 100 percent a throw but but my point is though like it's if the umpire sees it it's their interpretation to pay it so if we might think oh it's just it's just knocked out, but they might be blindsided because of their stupid positioning, and they'll go, "Oh, that's a throw." Like, there's always dot points with the rule. Yeah, it's like one point one, and then point one, point one, point. Like, it's just the issue is now all the changes um are, are being put in to fix rules that they've changed. It's the, there's rule changes now for the rule changes, and it's like this is where it gets just fucking like impossible to deal with, and like. Where you should just be like, all right, like let's just let's just call it and just be like, okay, like when did you, you know what's a rule that's pissed me off lately? Mm-hmm. It's like none of the main ones, you know, insufficient intent or holding the ball or whatever. Pushing the back, yeah, just a f- 
it's just become a nothing rule. Like no one is like they're not paying it correctly. There's been blatant pushes that haven't been paid. And well, there was a couple Thursday night that I saw that um were given away from both sides. But mm. overall they like you watch footy across the weekend. There are so many contests with like even in the ruck contest, like pushing out the other ruckman, it's just and even like players landing in the back of other players, they're not being paid anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those rules that I think no one is bringing up, and I like to be different. That's but fair. it's yeah, just one of those. Protect the tall people, man. <laughs> Give them some help. Give the defenders some help when the forwards are just fucking shoving them in the back and like taking Look, the. I'm not speaking from personal experience, but like I got smashed on the weekend and then get free kick for it. <laughs> so ah, the two there's two rules that annoy me for very different reasons. One gets overpaid and one doesn't get paid at all anymore. One is the sliding below the knees rule, and oh. that is the, that is the perfect example of the AFL being way too reactionary. Gary Rowan broke his leg, right? Absolutely, that's a terrible thing to happen. Shouldn't have been a rule change from it though, because now it's fucked everything. People, this is the thing that's annoyed me. This is ever since Geelong versus St. Gilda. I've had this fucking brewing in me, right? Liam Stocker gets to the ball first. He literally puts his hand on the ball. Patrick Dangerfield runs into his ribs, hurts Stocker's ribs, and then Dangerfield gets the free kick. And I'm like, Stocker put his head over the ball and picked it up first, and then Dangerfield ran into him. Like, it is the most, oh, they overpaid the shit out of that. And then the one that they don't pay enough, I think they've just got rid of it all together. Kiki in danger. Doesn't exist anymore. I see it fucking... 40 times a week, people put their hands over the ball and someone will just fucking just smack the shit out of it and they're just like, play on. And I'm like, no, no, no. That's not, that's a shit one. I completely agree. I completely agree. Those two piss me is off. It, those, those are the two it, rules that just fucking just... Mm. Is it is the first one because Dangerfield's involved? Yeah, and it was St. Kilda. But like, even still, that annoyed me even without that. Because oh, I, hate it. I hate it when players put their head over the ball. They... Are doing. I'm holding American football. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they put their head over the ball because they want to correctly, correctly possess it, and then another player comes in, just fucking guns blazing, coming in, and running over the top of them, and then they get the free kick. I'm like, that's just fucking stupid. Like, oh, it's funny. Um, I and I completely agree with that. I, the funny thing was, like, I'll go back to local footy, like. On the weekend, our obviously change rooms interconnect and everything, and the umpires were in the other room, and then my bag was in the other room, and I've gone in, iced up, shirt off, beer in hand, I sit down, <laughs> and the umpires are right there, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, it, I'm gonna ask them because they was like in my game on the weekend, they were so quick to pay holding the ball, so I was like, oh, maybe and they you brought it down, yeah, down all the way, and I was like, oh, I, I asked, I was like, is is that has that been implemented into our game because you know normally the league and stuff will communicate that and they didn't do it that week and they're like i mean yes it has it's been like a soft call to bring it in but they were like again it's just part of the interpretation and i was just like right that's just interesting managed to get it i think i got a league vote as well because i had a conversation with them but that's besides <laughs> the point because you're sucked up to the league, I'm by, so they will probably just, ah, oh, we'll put him in. <laughs> Look, they asked for my number, and I didn't give him a fine one, just the 41 on the back. So it is what it is. But that's besides the point. That's just a little yeah. fact that put a sneak in there. But, yeah, apparently, if it's going all the way down, I don't know about your game, but if it's coming all the way down to the local footy, then, again, like, everyone's going to be affected by these changes and by all these rules. And what's in local footy, Jared? Last touch. Yeah, I know. Well, there wasn't many tackles in my game, admittedly. Uh, 138. Yeah. Win. There's not a lot of not a lot of tackling going on in that uh, that game, unfortunately. But um, like the umpiring, like in my thing, wasn't pretty. But the ones that they were paying, they were they were actually letting doing the opposite. They were just letting everyone play. Like there was a lot of both sides again, just dropping the ball, and they would just be like, "Yeah, play on." I think it was also because the umpires were like, "They're already down like 12 goals. Let's just just let them play." But like. Well, I didn't really experience it, and I didn't stay to watch the seniors or anything like that, so I wouldn't know in that regard. But, yeah, I don't know. This actually goes well into, like, because <laughs> we were talking before, how we're just going to – it's an, another segment thing we're doing. But, like, half of the things in the other segment I'm doing are about umpires. So this uh, this whole episode is just going to be me abusing umpires, I think. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm also um, you know, just hating umpires, really. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I've got plenty more to come. <laughs> Don't you settle pedal. <laughs> All 
Also tells me that you didn't lay a tackle on the weekend either. Nah. Uh, probably laid half a one. Put my arm around a guy as he kicked it, maybe. More of a cuddle. Yeah, not even. Just a tap on the shoulder. Just a... You're right, mate. Nah, it makes me jealous. Anyway, so the <laughs> things I see... <laughs> yes. Uh, is something we're going to do for this week and probably this week only because... <laughs> Yeah, we never <laughs> oh, We yeah, we. Jared said I sourced this on the weekend. I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. I saw this, and like, yeah, that kind of thing. That's how mm-hmm. every every idea. Who said it? Yep. Nick Fury said started with an idea or something. Like that. Idea. Yeah. Anyway, things you <laughs> saw, Jared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all most of mine come from the one game in Essendon Gold Coast because it's very fresh in my mind because I it just happened. Um, you can tell me about the game because I didn't watch it. That's fine. Uh, it was a pretty good game of footy, uh, except as I was saying before, the umpiring was fucking awful towards the end. Um, just like <laughs> over umpiring to shit, like yeah, playing stupid shit, just like really bad both ways. Uh, another thing the umpires did in the game that I noticed that I don't want to see anymore, and I said it last year, I'm pretty sure. Get rid of the bounce. Get rid of the bounce. Uh, throw it up. No, nah, I disagree. Time. I think I think yeah, the bounce. I think it's over. I think not enough. Not enough umpires are good at it. I like the idea of it. I like the whole thing of like the first bounce of the grand final, first bounce of the year, first bounce of Antarctic Day. But not enough umpires are good at it now to be able to keep it around. That's because there's seventeen of them on the field. <laughs> I think that they need to be fucking trained hard in just knowing how to bounce the ball. <clears throat> Honestly, there should be a fifth umpire and it's just a specialist bounce. Person. Specialist bouncer. He runs into the middle, bounces the ball, runs out. <laughs> yeah, he could be like the, the reserve umpire that reserve. sits on the bench. Yeah. But like he comes in with his trackies and he just yeah. lands I've an almighty bounce yeah. and then That's pisses off. Or, or you put a machine in the middle of the ground, right? And it just shoots the ball up. <laughs> like a sprinkler head. And it just like shoots the ball up. <laughs> nah, okay. better yet. It's like from Space Jam. It had a little drone and it just has the ball yeah, and it drops, drops it. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Either of those two. Because I just it's just annoying me that umpires don't have to do it anymore. Or what you do, right, to make every umpire know have to know how to do it, you bring back like AFL 2006 where they would bounce it everywhere. Every single tackle, every stoppage, it was a fucking bounce no matter where it was on the ground. <laughs> they would just bounce that shit. And it was the best. <laughs> That's such a throwback. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Unless I'm thinking, oh, no, he might not because it might have been wet. But I think the Nick Davis goal comes from a bounce. Like, I think I think that stoppage, they bounce it in the pocket. i to find out. Hang on. I'm going to... YouTube this thing. Mm-hmm. Good, speak amongst yourselves. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Jared, just, Jared's got you for a minute. I just think there's not enough good umpires. to. Well, no, there's fine umpires, but they don't, none of them know how to bounce it. Uh, and it's really annoying, and I don't like it. So that's basically it. Uh, I have a lot of opinions about umpires this week, as it turns out, which is the norm, probably. Uh, you were wrong. It's a throw up. Ah, oh, but there was a there's a highlight that I watched at some point where I like watched it and I was like, oh, they're fucking bouncing it. I was like, that's crazy. I mean, I can't remember what highlight that is, but like, I just remember being like, that is unbelievable. Imagine that, just, just everywhere. bouncing it everywhere. Fuck that guys, genu- genuinely shit all around the ground. <laughs> Those games would be so long though because like umpires would fuck it up so they'd have to redo it. Like, oh man, there'd be so many stoppages. <laughs> So shit. I know they, they're talking about my, wanting to make the game shorter. You know how to make it longer? Start bouncing all around the ground. <laughs> Look, this is my opinion on make, making the game shorter, right? It's got nothing to do with the 46 players that do the game, nothing to do with any like scoring. It's all AFL based, it's all yeah. umpire based, uh, it's based. all their own fault. It's all Channel 7 based, it's all AFL based, it's all sponsor based. It is nothing to do with the actual play on the football field. If they wanted to shorten the game, they could do so much stuff. Like, oh, we've just kicked the goal. Guess what? It's a straight kick in straight away. If they wanted to shorten the game, right? No score review. Just call it as you see. If they wanted to shorten the game, guess what? Don't play it. <laughs> this is an example of them bringing in rule changes to fix other rule changes. They brought in the score review, which made the games infinitely longer. And now they're like, fuck, how do we make the game shorter? And I'm like, get rid of the score review. <laughs> or 
Just make it automated. Get rid of the goal umpires where they don't have to fucking second guess themselves every time. Again, I feel like I say don't get rid of the goal umpires every second week at this point. But there's so many things you could do, and it's annoying. It's really annoying. Last touch would probably do the same thing because boundary umpires are shit too now. Um, the other thing as well, that if you wanted to do it right, if you wanted to have the game well umpired, you could almost have boundary umpires calling things. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I would not mind. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing boundary umpires could call things and field umpires, if they think it's wrong, overrule them. That's fine. Cool with that. But I think boundary umpires should be able to call, depending on what it is, I suppose. Like, if it's like a high contact, I think you could you could see a boundary umpire paying that. It's like one of those ones that's near the boundary line. There's a contest there. The umpire's standing in the middle of the ground having lunch because they don't stand anywhere good. Um, and then, you know, he just sees like a high tackle or he dragged it in or pushing the back. Well, I don't know how you don't see that. Again, the pushing the back thing. I'm sorry to harp on about it. But like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same in the AFL, but... In local footy, like when I used to umpire, boundary umpires could like. Whoa, 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 whoa! You used to umpire. I used to, be, I used to be a boundary umpire. Yeah, I didn't do field umpire. Really? Umpire. Yes, I did back in my day when I, I was like when I was like sixteen and needed cash. I used to do. I used to do boundary yeah. umpire for the local league when I sat there. Um, but you used to be able to put players on a report. I don't know if you can do that in the AFL. I don't know if boundary umpires can do that. Not too many cameras. Yeah, it's, yeah, they don't need to put them on a report. Plug in. The camera will pick them up. <laughs> Speaking because... of reports. I was just about to fucking do this. <laughs> Speaking of reports. I was about to say, you know who could have reported? I was like, you know what? Ah. Andrew, could have recorded, reported something. Harley Reid. <laughs> you know, the funniest part about this is some dropkick kid is going to win the Rising Star because Sam Darcy and Harley Reid. It's going to be Darcy win. Wilson. Yes. <laughs> Nah, I'm going slam Sam Closey from Gold Coast. No, fuck that. Darcy Wilson's gonna be the running star. <laughs> and I'm so excited. <laughs> Hang on, let me check the sports bet odds because I bet you Darcy Wilson's is just fucking skyrocketed. <laughs> he is he is so gonna be there. I um okay, firstly, I, I don't know, it's not like it's like a biased thing because it's not like if he if he got off the Saints were gonna get something for it. We don't get anything for it. I think it should have been a. I think it should have been a suspension. I think it should be a suspension. It's a dangerous tackle. It's the literal definition of a dangerous tackle. Um, yeah, and this, I agree with that. Yeah, so I think, I think they got it right. Um, it's a. It's yeah. It's. It also doesn't help that Darcy Wilson is a very skinny <laughs> guy, so he gets like ragdolled in that tackle. Um, so if, he's think... any, if he's any bigger, it doesn't happen. But yeah. Do... Do you think like he's not only swung his hopes of a rising star, but he's also just swung the medal over the top of Darcy Wilson's neck as he's gone <laughs> he down? Said, there you go, mate. Have that one. Good luck to you. <laughs> Is your exception. Make sure you thank me in the speech. <laughs> okay. And I'm trying to find Sam Darcy to... won, by the way, just before you mentioned the odds. He genuinely killed Maynard. And I think for every AFL fan that isn't Collingwood, thank you, Sam Darcy. When that happened, I looked over at mum and it was just like, oh, <laughs> he's fucked for a while, probably. <laughs> uh, two weeks, it's not bad, but hey, it is what it is. Sam Darcy's mm-hmm. good for football. Exactly. Um, I realised just now that George Wardlaw is still uh, eligible, I think. Can't hit a target to save his life. Give it to Sam Bills. Yeah, <laughs> well, Darcy well, I think the- the funnier, the funnier thing about this is you can't even see the odds right now because Tab have shit themselves going, oh, fuck, Harley Reid. Let's not, like, let's do it. So they've shut the market down. So you can't actually bet on anybody right now, which is even funnier. So before Harley Reid got suspended, it was George Wardlaw, Colby McKercher, and then Darcy Wilson. So Darcy Wilson's winning. Yeah! <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> We're gonna win something this year. <sighs> nah, there's something. It's St Kilda. Something will happen. Yeah, I was gonna say someone's gonna have a fucking ball. There is still twelve <laughs> rounds to go, Jared. Riley Sanders is about to average thirty-five touches a game for the rest of the year <laughs> and completely fucking wipe the floor with everybody. <laughs> Jace Burgoyne's still eligible. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we debut Tom Aston whatever his name is. And he averages twenty and forty hitouts. <laughs> He's 
five foot two. <laughs> I don't know why I thought he was a rucky. <laughs> he's 170. He's a Brent Harvey spec and he's going to be rucking. I, 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 I honestly, I thought he was a rucky, to be honest. I don't know why I thought that. Do you know there, that, yeah. what that is? That is the equivalent of an AFL Live 2005 where your ruckman would come off for a small forward and the small forward would go on the ruck and you yeah. can't control where the Every players time. are going. You're like, fuck, yeah, you'd see like the little bench thing at the top and it's like Max Gorn off, fucking Caleb Windsor on, and you're like, what? Like, <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> just like uh, that's very funny <laughs> um the only other thing well my other thing that i've seen this weekend and it's just again purely related oh, still to, on that yeah i know right purely related to sun's bombers is that there are two former saints players right now that are playing for their fucking lives right ben long and nick hind are playing fucking football <laughs> nick hind had the best game i've seen him play in like I have no idea how long. And this year, he's been, like, actually good. And then Ben Long had that game where he has one good game a year. And he had it today. He kicked four today. And I was like, oh, Ben Long. There it is. We've all been waiting for it. Yeah. I like that. I did say that, too. I've completely forgot he was a thing. Obscure Saints, obscure former Saints players just popping up once a year to just have that fucking game. Jamie Cripps, last year, kicked five when they beat the Dogs (laughs) at Marvel. (laughs) Ben Long is um he might have a short time left, but it's a hmm, it's a good one. Good time, not a long time. Way. Anyway, Nick Hines' head is like really awesome, shaved, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so bad. Yeah, anyway. like they do, like point five. <laughs> Like skin fade, he's like in the negatives of shave. Yeah, that is so like, shaved. He's like shaved into his like into his scalp. Like that man is. He's inside out. Yep. Hairless <laughs> <laughs> cat. He's old Nick on. That's... <laughs> anyway, that's things we've seen. <laughs> uh, just while you close the segment and completely forget about me, uh, just a couple of things that I just said. You didn't even know this segment was going. Still. <laughs> I didn't, but I thought of something. Oh, then yeah, go. <laughs> Look, I'm doing an imitation of Noah Bolter. Oh fuck, that was funny. Hey, what? <laughs> Do you know, like when you see like those inspiring speakers or people that are like doing live readings of their book? That's what he looked like. He yeah, was just he there, was like over. play by play. You know what was the even funnier part about it? Is that Adam Uze was, like, watching him, like, taking notes off his notes. And I was like, you are the coach, Adam. <laughs> like, you do not need to look at Noah Bolter's notes. <laughs> at one stage, I saw the page blank, and I was like, oh, Richmond's game plan then. <laughs> it just reminded me of that Matt Real thing from whatever, like, last year. Oh, yeah, he was writing the notes. Was. Yeah, when he just used to take his fucking notes, he had his tucked-in shirt, and he'd be watching Noah Anderson pick up grand balls, and he's just like... Bent left knee first. <laughs> also, you obviously the most talked about game is Essendon Gold Coast. Um, mm. Dimmer drinking milk after the funny, right? Dwayne Russell spec <laughs> caught me off guard a little bit. No, mine's the reaction that he has to. He's like, "Is that milk?" And they're like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yes." <laughs> it's like. Yeah, Can I drink it? <laughs> it's like fucking what? Like why? You, what why? have you been drinking for the last two hours, Dim? <laughs> bizarre. He's a bizarre human being. We go around the glass table. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> right. What do we do this week, Jared? This week we did. If you could have any other uh, any player from any other AFL club on your team, who would it be? Who most suits yours? Yours, uh, if you want to explain yours, firstly. Mine was um, mine was Reece Stanley. Uh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we need an aging ruckman. No, mine was Charlie Kerno. Um, obviously, big, powerful key forward. Uh, we've got an aging Dixon, who averages one pick up per game, and Todd Marshall, oh, who <laughs> yeah, uh, Todd Marshall, and obviously George Artis around the mark. But um, yeah, wouldn't mind big Charlie. Loitering in it. Imagine Charlie Kerno just leading out, and you've got Rosie Butters and Horn Francis oh, just man. kicking to you. <laughs> We'd win so many flags. 
disgusting. Every time Charlie Kerno does anything, I'm like, that shouldn't be allowed. Like, it should be illegal. Because, like, he, it like... shouldn't be allowed, no. Yeah, he, like, for, for long portions of games gets, like, locked down. And you're like, oh, maybe he's going to, like, really get locked down this game. Like, he was... Like, he wasn't playing incredible. And then he has that one quarter every fucking time. It's always the third, too. And he just gets off the fucking leash. Like, it happened last week against the Suns as well. Mac Andrew was playing really well on him. And then for some reason... Oh, no, then the Blues made a good swap and got him swapped off. And as soon as Andrew wasn't on him, fuck, he just killed him. <laughs> he was just like, all right, game over. And he kicked, like, three very quick goals. And it was like, all right, there it is. He can, like... He's the biggest just game changer in the league right now. Like, you can just turn any game on its head. And it's... I mean, anyone would want him, really. We really like his arms. Yeah, we've we've spoken a lot about Charlie Gurdos on this podcast. <laughs> anyway, we'll move on to um, who was yours? <laughs> I could have picked. I could have picked fucking Eddie. I could have picked like a key forward to go with Max. Well, like, you did uh, pretty much when we we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, when we were talking about it, I was like, I could pick this and this, and I was like, oh no, I'm going like, with him. You were like rap god, just spitting out names, trying to pick one. What's the, in the wheel? Which names coming up? Help. <laughs> we need help in our, all parts of our list. We could have taken a key back, could have taken Sam Taylor, but I decided to go with something that we have not had in like for as long as I can remember, which is like a just a tall midfielder that can kick goals. Like we were close when Dugowie was like kind of like when we were like going, to going. But Mark Spontempelli, all right, that man is the perfect example of just a. Like, he is as tall as a Ruckman, <laughs> gets clearances constantly, and then when he wants to rest, he just goes forward and becomes the best forward on the team. And it's like, oh, I just, I wish. Like, I wish Jack Steele had the capability to go in and have, like, like eight disposals in, like, half a quarter, and then be like, I'm going to get a rest in the mid. I'm going to rest down forward now and just, like, go one out and be like, kick it to me. I'll, I'll do the rest. Like, that is, oh, so good. I love Bond. And he dominated on the weekend. He was... Fucking incredible. <laughs> he was. Um, definitely a, a nice time for him to score 160 fantasy points in a bye. Yeah, I uh, I captained him <laughs> in a in a bye week that I'd already written off. <laughs> and he dropped to 170 and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> Why have to be so good? <laughs> um, yeah. Some of the people definitely came through. Um, I like this one from... <laughs> The back pocket, who are a podcast that I've seen actually uh, on on the talks. Um, every team's answer should be Reed, and West Coast answer should be Dacos. I mean, yeah, not after the weekend. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. You don't want him if you take him now. He misses the first two weeks. I would like. Yeah. I, I get. I get if you were getting them right now and then get them for the rest of their career. I was like with the questions, like right at this very second, who could you inject into your list right now that immediately make you like. So much better for the Premiership. Reed is very good, absolutely, but there are there are better midfielders in the league than Harley Reed right now. But in the future, understandable as to why you would want Harley Reed. Um, and then Dacos is a great answer for basically any team. You, anyone could use Nick Dacos, really. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and he's not bad. You know. <laughs> there are has his moments. Um, yeah. I like this one from Fudley, who's just given us a trade. I read that and I was like, it's not the question, man, but that's cool. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm happy with this trade because I'm interested to see where it leads. So it's Port Power, which is a no no. Um, <laughs> Port give Wines and George Addis to North Melbourne. Kangas give Bulldogs a first rounder and a second rounder. Bont goes to Adelaide and plays centre half forward for Power. So we get Bont. Bont for Wines and George Addis. Yeah, but we're also getting Charlie Kerno, so like, <laughs> so like, kind of makes it all worth it. I love how uh, this fuddly person thinks that the dogs would give up, or the the, the Kangas just giving dogs a first and second rounder. It's is, bont washed. Just, it's fine. Yeah, like the dogs would accept a first and second rounder for bont. <laughs> yeah, well, the logic is simply you get two players. I see nothing wrong with it. <laughs> two players for one player, obviously. Like, yeah. <laughs> future now take the future man it's all good oh sure. but uh yeah no, that one is very funny um in the response to the back pocket one i saw that the eagles if they had gordon for the eagles as like an outside player yeah that'd be some good shit errol gordon down the wing for eagles like harley reed getting inside and getting the ball and then giving a hand out to errol gordon oh man that is some some tasty shit <laughs> that's some good shit right there <laughs> it's almost like and i can't believe i'm gonna say this it's almost like we're picking like uh, fantasy teams. 
the best players in the league. <laughs> Everyone is picking the best players in their position. <laughs> Imagine having the best player. It's like, oh, it's they do that once a year. What's it called? Um, uh, all Australian team. <laughs> Bewildering, right? Absolutely astonishing stuff. Uh, and again, here's another one. Imagine Bont playing for the Swans. Yeah, imagine. It's just fucking... Nah, it wouldn't work. Ground's too small. <laughs> I still think Bont could make it work. No, I disagree. Sure. <laughs> I love Adam Sperling's one here, being like Port Nita, Wiedering, Moore, or Andrews, as if you guys didn't just pick up two key defenders in the last trade period. Admittedly, they are Asad Radigalia and Zerk Thatcher, who aren't exactly Woodering War Andrews, but I feel like that's just overloading your key backs at this point. Look, the strategy by Port Adelaide is quite literally the version of when you go to Woolworths and you need to get $30 or more to get your points for awards. That's what we do. We go there we get like two for eight for lollies or two for ten for something else. Like we go and get things and then get our point reward. Well, so we got trade we got trade points <laughs> at the moment. Um and now we've got a ten dollar voucher for the end of the year. So it's looking promising and I think we could go after one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see how this one pans out first. You do it with drafts as well. Like you you draft three midfielders at once in Dersma, Butters and Rosie and be like, maybe two of them would be good. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see how we go. <laughs> you can never have enough. You can never have enough midfielders. Packets of chicken for dinner. You know, like it, you just always compared Rosie Butters and Dersma to packets of chicken. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, who else is there? I'm trying to see if we had any on Instagram. I don't know if we did. Um, but yeah, a lot of other people just, oh, it's, no, it's just you saying how much is Charlie worth. Uh, probably more than a packet of chicken. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of people saying Bont and Kerno and stuff, which is fair. <laughs> yeah, clip me with the backhand one, don't you? It's really good. <laughs> I actually, really funny. This, is not, this is not related to this at all, but I'll pose you this before we, we move on. Right now, would you rather Harley Reid or Nick Dacos? Uh, For the rest well, of the, Nick, not like not this very second. Like they join your team as of next year, and you get them through the rest of their careers. Do you want Reid or do you want Dacos? Um, a very strong case for both. I think with the way the game's going at the moment. I would prefer Dacos. I was because, literally the same thing. <laughs> because Harley Reid proposes to me he's going to have a big presence on games. He's going to win games, kick goals. Dacos does the same. But and it's not to say Dacos hasn't already proven himself. But with the way the game's going, I can see where it's going to be in the next five years. Skill is everything. And you're going to have these, these big power midfielders. They fade out. Like they have patches where they don't impact games or you can shut them out Dacos is someone that you can whilst tag he can make an impact with 15 touches so he could have 35 but if he's hitting 20 kicks in in today's game hitting a target is so crucial it's crucial to how you set up from back to forward to hitting a target inside 50 Dacos has something that I don't think Reed has and that is being able to hit that target hit that 45 hit that long down the line and make it work. Like I just, and Harley can develop that, but I think over longevity, Dacos has that touch. And when someone has that pure touch, first touch, yeah, you can't compete with that. I think I was literally going to say Dacos for the exact same reason in that I think outside players are the, not like the, like I'm trying to think of like the way, like they are the ones that if the game is on the line, if you want to win a game of football and Dacos has already proven that in his very short career. If you want to win a game of football, you get it into the hands of one of those really, really skillful outside players. Dacos, you know, you can give it to Errol Gordon when he does the same thing. Like, these, like, outside players, Jack Sinclair, for, like, you give them to the players that can run and are really good users of the football. Like, <clears throat> the inside mids are great footballers. I love Matt Rowe. 
Liver has been doing it for a long time. Harley Reid is getting towards that side of things as well. The power midfielders. Harley Reid is probably a step above them in terms of like he can really push and like kick a lot of goals and stuff. But I would say also say Dacos in terms of I just think he's so skillful. And like you look at the likes of Scott Pendlebury, he got by for a really long time. And he's one of Collingham's best ever players because he is just he is that person. Like he is so skillful and like can make time stand still. And that's the kind of yeah. stuff that Dacos. Yeah, and away. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think it's just, yeah, but you can just see where the game's going, and you can make your choice on that and not pick it. Oh, look, this kid's talented, or you know, they, the love child of the AFL. If you just strip it back and purely look at the two things, where the game's going and what their skill base is, I'm going day course, but you know. It's a tough choice when if you get presented that chance. Oh yeah, especially like we don't know what Harley Reid's going to be yet. Like <laughs> he's had a very good patch, but we don't know how much better he can be. Like he could he could still get even better than what he is now. And like, yeah, good luck to him. <laughs> What's well, like throwing you in the thirds and just like you put you like a really good player bunch of the rest like West Coast like that, and then they just outshine everything. But like if West Coast start winning. Will he stand up in those those times? It's just, you know. I can't believe you've just compared me in the thirds to Harley Reid playing for West Coast. You compared yourself to Harley Reid the other day. No, I said that I was doing it before Harley Reid was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got that, Harley. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Harley could go dominate thirds footy thing with though. No, oh, mate. Couldn't handle a cold Friday night at Chadwick Reserve. <laughs> nah, there's no chance in hell. <laughs> there's no business cast travel to Dingley from fucking Perth, mate. There's only one Jared Thomas in this in the vicinity anyway. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that it? Are we done? I think there is one uh, segment missing that I'm now trying. Can you can you show me that? Can you show everyone that photo of you? I wonder what the segue is going to be to the next segment. <laughs> and we'll finish the show on that, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an absolute pleasure <laughs> to. <laughs> There you go. Happy? Oh, it's in the right hand now. Oh, yay. Look at that. He changed it up. Whoa, look at the magician. I tell you what, though, if you were a magician and you're on stage, I'd happily come watch buy your sexy face a ticket. All right, stupid sexy time. <laughs> I'm just like, how's he going to get there? <laughs> <laughs> stupid sexy time. Players. Anyway, <laughs> stupid sexy time, Jared. Yes. Which just sounds weird. Like, just saying that like like that, it's just like, mm, stupid, sexy, stupid time. sexy time. What are we yeah. going to do on this Sunday sexy night? Time. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Get shivers. <laughs> <laughs> Show me that photo one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Um, anyway, do you have one this week? Yes, I do. Um, this one is very funny. So, <laughs> last, week, last week in the office, right, for some reason we got to the conversation of players that sound like the teams that they play for right so like you like the player's name you're like you hear a player's name or you like say a player's name you're like fuck that is sucks like a that this team's player right this player that i'm about to pick is the most melbourne football club player in the entire world right like you hear his name you're like yep that guy plays for melbourne caleb windsor right <laughs> yeah. you just you hear that name and you're like that is private schoolboy. That is middle of Melbourne. That is Melbourne Football Club. That's Cheeseboard. That's MCC. That's that's Melbourne. Yep. Caleb Windsor is the most Melbourne sounding player <laughs> in the world. So you picked him based on his name. No, but also I was just it was just another thing as well, is that he's actually a very good looking person. But he's got the private schoolboy haircut, which is the the mullet, but like like it's very styled and it's like shaved on something very styled mullet. Like not a dirty one, just very, very specific. Like paid a lot of money for it. <laughs> kind of an interesting description you've given me here for Caleb Windsor. Like 
it's almost like a backhanded compliment for being stupid sexy. Well done. You've you're good looking, but you play for Melbourne. You're a private school boy, and you've got but a very expensive haircut. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. It's very back ended because it's like, ah, yes, you're a good looking dude, absolutely. But you sound like the most private school boy ever. It sounds a bit of jealousy. Because <laughs> they didn't go to a private school? Yeah, probably, actually. <laughs> That'll do it. Could be that. Could be the fact that, you know, that he has a bit more of a rich two first name basis than you do. Um, Windsor. Oh, that's a very rich first name. <laughs> that's real one goggle spec. Yeah. Cap on yeah. at the that's D's real, game. Real Montgomery MCC. Area. That's real Montgomery <laughs> areas. Is that, that's what that is. Real fucking Archibald areas. But yeah. Release yeah. the hounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he's a good looking dude. So Caleb Windsor. Shame you lost by 90 points this week, but you get this at least. So good on you. <laughs> <laughs> bit of a, it's a bit of a Bailey Humphrey pick that one. I know he's a very, he's a very young, very young man, Caleb Windsor. I think Daddy taught him to get his license. <laughs> Caleb Windsor. Caleb Windsor. He's born in two thousand five. What the fuck? <laughs> it's disgusting. He's what? He was born in two thousand five. Oh boy! It's his birthday in a week. <laughs> Congratulations for turning nineteen. Can I put up? Oh boy. <laughs> What are you two going to be doing? <laughs> oh, boy. It always derails. Anyway, <laughs> who's your pick this week? I'm not sure how old this bloke is, but... Um, <laughs> when his birthday is. Or when his birthday is, or what school he went to, but he's definitely... A, his family's not from this country. Um. <laughs> They call me off guard. <laughs> it's not a backhanded compliment. He, no, I know. And it definitely probably does not sound like the club he plays for. <laughs> sure. But he's definitely been ripping it apart and unfortunately on the weekend got injured and he's out for the next 12 months. But the way he's been going about things is, I thought, sensational. And he's a good-looking dude. Um, McKelty LaFau. Oh, yeah. Good pick. Yeah. I just thought, like... On the weekend, like even though he got injured, he kicked a couple of goals. He's been Richmond's shining light in what's been a pretty terrible year for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and my stupid sex is going to be a little bit serious, but like just deserves some recognition and, and respect for what he's been doing. He's been low key one of my favorites to watch this year in, in Richmond's thumpings or their gallant defeats. And I think when I picked him for an any time goal scorer on the weekend and he got the first leg, I was just super, super happy. So Not really connected to him. <laughs> yeah, we, we connected on an emotional level. Um, not a physical one because I can walk, but like, you know, it's just <laughs> oh that's that's bad. That's, 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 that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> too, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish you all the best though, Mr. Lafau. Yes. Um, Recover world, can't wait to see you back on the f- a field next year. No, and I, I like that pick a lot. And he's also got a really just cool story. Like, he was just playing, like, local footy a couple of years ago. They just were like, oh, we'll take a punt on him. And then this year, he's playing literally because of the injuries. And they're like, oh, we'll just see how he goes. And he's been so exciting. Like, he's been just, a, like, so much fun. He shows really good forward craft. Yeah, it sucks that he got injured. He, like, he's one of, he was one of like, my favorite Richard players. He played for a club near me in St. Kilda City. And like, there's there he's like a local like hero around here because like he's the one that like you know when like you get told stories of people that kick like twenty one goals in local footy like he's that guy like they're like yeah you know that the Mikel Tillavell kicked like twenty one for Sydney one day like he's that guy around here and so like the fact that he could go from that kind of player where like a lot of local footy players they'll do that and then just stay there they're like yeah I'm happy like I'll just I'll pay, I'll get paid a grand to play local footy every week but he was like no I'm gonna actually like push myself and now he's really good. And it's like, shit, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, good on him, McKelvey. 
sense again just a bit of jealousy that you're not the big dog in in your area no, that one I, that one i'm fully like good shit man <laughs> i'll be jealous of windsor but that so, one i'm like yeah that, <laughs> so you admit you're jealous of windsor yeah absolutely he plays, he plays AFL football of course i'm jealous of Ken windsor. No, i just wanted vindication <laughs> yeah that checks out i i seek approval jared it's a personality right. trait of mine I go hunting for the glory. <laughs> oh, but um, yeah. For some reason you said hunting for the glory, and my 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 brain went straight to Holy Grail. And now I'm just getting throwbacks to the first ever episode we did. I tell you what, actually, before we do finish up, and we've managed to do this, um, quite well. But like, we're nearly at episode fifty. Very close. I don't know how, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but no, I remember that first episode. Did they bring in Holy Grail for AFL 23? No. So we I, remember went fact, I remember saying that the game would be complete Needed if they did it, and they didn't do it. The game's not uh, complete anyway. <laughs> fucking, oh, actually, that's something I haven't spoken about that happened this week. Before we end up, this is the last fucking two minutes, right? AFL 23 came out like fucking forever ago with the promise of this ultimate team mode. They still haven't released it. It's like, what the fuck? They completely fucked this whole game. I can't believe they haven't refunded people. I can't believe there isn't like a lawsuit happening. I think there is probably going to be a lawsuit because like they fully yeah. sold this game on the ultimate team and then they just never gave it up. So like... Apparently it's coming. Oh, it's been coming for the last year and a half. So I, I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> Oh, what a way to finish. How about that? <laughs> How many words? How many innuendos? What a way to finish. Everybody go and follow our socials and keep 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 watching and sharing with people and all of that. I wish I could last that long. <laughs>